Hi guys, it's Erin with TVS Safety and I'm here today to talk to you about navigation assessments. Navigation assessments, so why do we do them? Navigation assessments are risk assessments and every captain at Cooper Marine and Timberland vessels conducts risk assessments every single day. Before you make a bridge, you already know your toes width and height and draft. You also know the water depth and the bridges width and height. You are aware of any limitations with visibility due to tall barges and you have a good field of vision. You have checked your navigation, equipment, radar, radios, GPS, AIS, your swing meter, etc. And you are aware of any nonconformities or deficiencies that may come with those pieces of equipment. You are looking ahead for traffic. You're gauging the wind and current for your passage through the bridge, and you have your lookouts ready. You are aware of the weather conditions along your route and at the bridge. You have reviewed the local notice to mariners, and you are also aware of any navigation hazards along your route. You have done all of this for every bridge and lock, bend, and harbor. And most of the time you do it without even thinking about it. It's just what good captains do. So why do you do all of that in your head all day, every day? You do it to keep you and your crew and the vessel safe. Subchapter M added a little bit of a change to your regular routine. Now you have to record the navigation assessment on paper or in your electronic system. Navigation assessments are found in 46 CFR 140.635, and it requires that an assessment is completed prior to getting underway. And the only way to prove that you have done the assessment is to fill out the form. As the master or the captain of your vessel, you are required by law to comply with the applicable provisions of subchapter M and comply with your TISMIS or your towing safety management system. Failure to do so can trigger statutory penalties, including suspension and revocation of your license and or fines, which you really do not wanna to have to pay. When the Coast Guard comes out to issue the COI, or the auditor comes on board to audit your vessel, they will be looking for the completed navigation assessments. If the Coast Guard comes on board after an incident, which they will, they will be looking for the completed navigation assessments as well. And in here, it is usually after an incident that missing navigation assessments can cause you the most problems. So about five years ago, there were a group of toes. They were locking into the Mississippi from the Harvey Canal during high water. The first tow got out, finally got topped around near Gretna Light and called the tow behind him and he said he had wished he had an assist. The tow that came out of the lock and pretty much followed in the first tow's track line got headed up river. Each of those toes was turning to port and they made it, thank God. The third tow came out, turned down river, and then tried to stop, tried to top around to starboard. They went sideways through the bridges and ran straight into the fleet on the Algiers bank below the bridge and broke a bunch of barges loose. The U.S. Coast Guard came out to the boat and they asked the captain to show them a navigation assessment or a voyage plan. He couldn't do that because he had not completed either one before his trip. They started proceedings against his license, the captain, and he eventually had it suspended. The company lost the five-year contract that the boat was on, and the rest of the crew was laid off because the boat was out of work. The U.S. Coast Guard said that had he done a, a navigation assessment and paid attention to the radio call that came from the first boat through the lock, then he would have known that he needed an assist or at least had one of his barges tripped through the lock for him. But his lack of planning and paying attention to the conditions around him cost him, his crew, and the company a lot. Although it seems like just another form, 
the navigation assessment can help you in the event of an incident. This navigation assessment will show that you did plan ahead and you took into account changing conditions, vessel conditions, and crew issues. And if you ever need to stop work, a risk assessment or a navigation assessment provides proof for stop work actions. And since you are doing all the work in your head already, make it official and just put it on the form. It'll just make your lives so much easier. Now let's take a moment. We want to discuss your navigation assessment procedures that are located in your TISMIS already. The officer of the watch must conduct the navigation assessment for the intended route and operations prior to getting underway. The navigation assessment must incorporate the requirements of pilot house resource management, assess operational risks, and also it needs to anticipate and manage the workload demands. This assessment must consider the following items, the velocity and direction of currents, water depth, river stages, tidal state, etc., along the route and at mooring locations. You need to consider the visibility, weather conditions, and changes anticipated. The knowledge, qualifications, and limitations of assigned members of the watch and their experience and familiarity with the towing vessel's equipment and particulars. The operational status of pilot house instruments, the controls, the alarms, systems, communications, compass, and any known deficiencies that are associated with those. Air draft and horizontal clearance of the vessel with the tow as applicable. Configuration, handling characteristics, and field of vision with the tow as applicable. Marine traffic and bridges, as well as locks to transits. You also need to know any known navigational hazards and broadcast notice to mariners. Any special conditions not covered above that could impact the safety to the navigation should be known as well. The officer of the watch must keep the navigation assessment up to date. So if you or your crew members have any questions on navigation assessment, please feel free to reach out to any TBS staff member or your DPA for Cooper Marine in Timberland. We are here to help and we want to make sure that your crew stays safe and that you are doing your navigation assessments without a hesitation. Hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks.